it's a little late, but today I'm going to show you guys my December reading wrap up, all the stuff that I read in December. I'm starting new this year and I'm not going to be late with my wrap ups. So I think this is like a good start, a good time of the month to do my reading wrap ups. I did read nine books last month. Uh, let's just get started. The first book that I read was Dying to Be Me by Anita Moriani. This is a biography of sorts. Um, where Anita explains how she grew up with all these different cultural backgrounds, ended up having a cancer and just like her life before and what happened when she had cancer and then when she had her near-death experience and then she talks about what happened during her near-death experience which totally changed her life and when she came back she was cu completely cured of cancer within three days and she talks about this like unconditional love that happens uh, when you have a near-death experience and that there is no like hate in the world, we're all united, like we're all part of the same type of energy, you know? Like you are the same energy that everyone else is. And she has all these concept reflections on our society and humanity and just like how important it is to know that you are perfect exactly the way you are. You are like a divine human being having a physical experience. Self-love is just so important and I thought this was a really good book. The writing is not amazing but I think the concepts that she's talking about are just really really important. Then I read All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefwater. I've read The Raven Cycle by her and also the Shiver trilogy or whatever it's called and I really like her writing style. I love the writing style in this one. It's a really unique concept and it's so like airy in a way that you don't really know when she's talking about like something that is magic or if it's not magic because she writes in a way that like doesn't let you know. This book is basically about this city called Bicurado in Colorado that is like a little town where no one ever really visits and this family called the C Surya family um, basically is a reason why people go there. They're known to be able to create or perform a miracle on people who come there and then they have all these people that come there to want to perform a miracle and the miracle that the saint in the Soria family performs is basically supposed to free your darkness and then you have to understand your darkness because it comes into a physical form and when you understand this physical form of darkness within you then the darkness disappears and you can leave from the city and this story basically follows these three teenagers and one is the saint, one is this girl called Beatrice, she's so like she doesn't think she has any emotions and then there is Shekin who basically wants to be like a famous radio player, is that what it's called? Yeah, and there just loads of these things happen, this boy comes into town and yeah, like it's a very complex story, it had so many good messages. The way that Steve, Ma Maggie Seawater writes is like, like this, this thing here. This quote that says, She formed pots out of clay that were so striking that sometimes when she went to gather clay for a new one, she discovered that the clay had eagerly already begun to shape itself for her. And like, this th that is a magic, but it leaves you guessing. Like, is it actually forming the clay for her? Or is it just like a way of speech? And I really, really love that about Maggie Seawater's writing. I thought it was a really good book. There was something lacking and I can't really tell why, like, I wanted it to be like one of my favorites but it wasn't quite there, but it was a really good book. Then I read Saga um, by Brian V. Vo K. Vogan and Fiona Staples. This is the fourth volume, so good. Um, I highly recommend this series. They have like amazing artwork, amazing um, characters. It's a science fiction series and just honestly just read it. Then I read Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I guess told you about this book in my 2000 best books of 2017. But this is about this world, or this, the rivalries between these two cities. One is really religious and one is basically thriving off of magic. And they worship these returned, which is basically people who've died and they're returned and they're said to carry some sort of prophecy and then treated like gods or kings. The princess in the city 
of the, of the religious city is sent to be the god king, the highest like form of return there is to marry him. That's the plot kind of and then there's all these people in the city that are trying to prevent war from happening and some are wanting there to be war. Then you get to follow this magical sword and this very strange person which you don't know who is. And don't read the back for god's sake if you want to read this book, don't read the back. Don't read what it's about, just like go into it unknowing because there's one character that says what who he is on the back but it is not revealed in the book until the like absolute absolute end so it's going to completely ruin it for you, I promise. Uh, the way magic works, works in this is that each person has like a breath. You can willingly give your breath but you can't take another person's breath. And then the more breath you have, the more things you can awaken that are like not human beings and all this and you need like a color to awaken something and then it pulls the color from the thing. It's really complicated but just read it. It was so good. The ending was brilliant. It's definitely one of my fa favorite fantasy books of last year's. Then I read Never Let Me Go by Kasui Ishiguro. I had to read this one because you know he uh, won the Nobel Prize in Literature. So this book is basically about, about uh, this girl called Kathy and she grows up in this house that you don't really know what's happening. It's basically all these other kids that are grown up in this house and they learn to do a lot of art and then every month they have to give away their art and their art is assessed and they don't really know why. But it's basically like almost like a boarding school except there's no home. So these kids have all grown up there. It's a dystopian, that's all I can tell you if you have not like seen the movie or read this book then I wouldn't recommend knowing more than that because the story is all about like trying to figure out what's happening and you also get to see Kathy when she's 40 and they t she's talking about all these donations but you quite don't know what donations it is in the beginning. I thought this was good but I'm a little bit clueless as to why he won like the Nobel Prize because it's a good book but based off of this book, I wouldn't understand exactly why, but I uh, guess like, I have to read the other books to know the author better. Then I read Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is a classic. I wanted to read it for so long. Uh, this is about Jonathan Harker who goes on a mission to Transylvania because he's going to meet this Count Dracula because he, Count Dracula wants to move to London and he's there to make the affairs possible. You know, set him up with the house, ask him what he needs and all that kind of thing. And when he's there, he starts to discover that Count Dracula is like immortal, blood-sucking, you know, all that jazz. <laughs> and he, by some miraculous way, escapes. And when he comes to London, you get to follow all these characters, his friends, and everything that happens when Count Dracula comes to London. That is kind of like a long synopsis. It's almost half the book, what I just told you. But, like, it's a classic, so it doesn't really matter that much. The whole book is told through letters form, so anything that is written, letters and diaries, and that's the only thing you get to know from all these characters. I really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was so good. I have this thing for, like, fantasy classics. I think it's just so amazing, like, the original ones. I also really liked Frankenstein. There's some themes of, like, feminism. Like, there's... Like, the way they talk about women in this is just so aggravating, but, like, what can you expect? It's, like, uh, published in 1908, so, but I really enjoy this book. Then I read Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. This is about, it's, I think it's, like, a reminiscent kind of story of Alice in Wonderland, because the main character is called Alice. She lives in the world of Furthermore, where everyone has, like, a specific gift. It's super colorful and everyone has different hair color and everyone's just really really colorful and the more color you have like the more magic you have not really but that's what people say and Alice is born black and white which means she has co no color except her eyes which are like honey flavored honey flavored oh my god I'm so dark <laughs> honey colored and then her father has gone missing for several years and in some way she's kind of brought on this mission to get him back and he she enters the world of Furthermore, which is just so magical, and she enters all these different things, and there's so many rules of Furthermore, and it is really a good book. It's like a middle grade, so it's a very easy read, but it was a lot of fun, and this month I'm going to be reading the second book, so I'm really, really glad I read this. Then I read The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the second book in the King Day 2, the King Killer Chronicles. I don't know. Um, the first one is called The Wise Man's Fear. 
It is about um, Quoth. He's an innkeeper and he tells the story of his life. Nobody knows he lives there. And basically he tells about his whole life from when he lived uh, with the magician troops and his parents got killed and he goes to this really poor city and then he goes to this university where he learns to do magic. This book basically got to follow him where he encounters some fairies, he encounters more magic when he learns more. He's really skilled, he's very witty, he has this amazing character and you just love him despite like all his flaws and the mistakes he makes. You want it to go so well for him. And through this book, you kind of, like, you wonder what happened to him. Because as his innkeeper, he's so lost. Like, he isn't the same person anymore. And you're trying to figure out kind of why. And the answer wasn't revealed in this. But there's more books coming. This is also the thickest book I read of last year. Um, so good. I think this one's better than the first one, actually. It was just amazing. Then I read The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. This is a poetry collection. And it is her second poetry collection. I read Milk and Honey um, as well last year, and she came out with this one. This one uh, is... I have a hard time reading poetry because it's almost like she's talking about things that are so personal to her. And so how can I tell her, like, or tell you guys that, that I don't like her poetry? Because it's not that I don't like it, it's just very, very simplistic. Like... She just states things like how they are, and they're very beautifully written, but it isn't, like, extraordinary. Like, I, I want to say I could have written this. Like, not the same one because this is her story, but, like, I think, like, I could write, like, her she writes because it's very simple, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it kind of, if you want, like, reassurance or kind of want to feel at home with certain issues that you have, like, I think this is... A good book because she talks about a lot of dark things I think a lot of feministic kind of stuff a lot about background her culture her family um, also like this terrible breakup um, that kind of thing so I liked it not really my type of poetry so those are all the books that I read in December I hope you guys enjoyed comment below some books that you guys read in December if you want to tell me and I hope you guys all have an amazing reading month in January and an amazing day and I'll see you guys soon Bye-bye.